so uh, in the in the previous few lectures we have seen uh, uh, how uh, to do an iteration in which there is an initialization step and then there is a set of things that we keep repeating uh, and we use iteration basically to do a few things one is to count how many cards are there in a pile and also to actually sum up add up all the mathematics marks or the total marks so these kinds of activities now one uh, one item that we did not discuss and that is very important basically is that we need some mechanism by which uh, uh, these stepwise procedures that we have described to you can be uh, written down and communicated to another person so before we uh, start programming uh, it is important basically that we write down these stepwise procedures in some formal form so that uh, we know what exactly we are programming the computer about so there has to be some uh, language or mechanism by which so, uh, something like this is done so typically there are two ways to do it uh, in this uh, lecture i am going to introduce to you uh, one method which is called flow charts and subsequently we'll talk about another method which is called pseudo code which is like english uh, way of describing a sequence of steps okay so uh, so this set of lectures is about an introduction to flow charts and um, so uh, when you look at flow charts these are basically diagrammatic representations uh, of uh, the sequence of steps that we are going to use or the algorithm that we are going to use and for for this diagram there will be a few uh, basic constructs or symbols that we will be using there are many more symbols than this that are typically used in flow charts but for the purpose of these lectures uh, these uh, four symbols will suffice so the uh, so you see basically there is a rectangular uh, box in which we can write things um, and then there is an arrow there is a diamond and uh, there is a oval shaped uh, box okay so the rectangular box is called a process or activity and uh, what that box is used for basically is to write down a set of operations that can change the value of a data uh, ch change the set value of some data that we have in our case basically we have discussed variables like count and sum and so on so activities that change operations that change the value of uh, a variable like count or sum is written in uh, inside this rectangular box uh, which which is called a process right uh, the second uh, symbol that we have is uh, an arrow symbol and the arrow symbol is basically used to connect these other boxes that is a diamond or a uh, uh, rectangle or something like that so the arrow shows the order of execution of the program step so if you have two uh, rectangular boxes connected by an arrow then basically the first you, it shows you the direction in which the program will execute it will show from the from the first then you follow the arrow and then you go to the next okay that's how it goes the third box third uh, symbol which is the diamond symbol is uh, called a decision uh, symbol right so here we can make a decision about uh, which direction the program should take so there could be a condition that you are checking for uh, and when that condition is uh, true for example you will take one path and when it is false you will take another path so the decision diamond basically is used to uh, make a choice between two different alternative paths that the program can take and finally this uh, this uh, oval shaped symbol uh, terminal uh, is basically used to indicate the beginning or end of the program so we have four symbols and uh, we can use these four symbols basically to uh, describe the flow chart for counting uh, so let us look at how do we count cards uh, how do you write how to count cards using a flow chart so that somebody else who is looking at the flow chart can also understand what is it that we are discussing in terms of a sequence of steps so the first thing that we need to do when we count basically is to start so the first symbol will always be start symbol followed by an arrow because we are saying that from start we are going to move in to the next step and uh, we are assuming basically that when we start all the cards that we want to count are in a single pile we call that pile 1 uh, and the first thing that we we did when we uh, described the procedure to you basically is that we started with a variable called count and this variable count was initialized to 0 right so the way to describe that in the flow chart is to put uh, count equal to 0 inside this rectangular box so the first process or the first activity is to is to initialize count to 0 uh, and then again 
there is an arrow which basically indicates that now the control or the program is now moving to the next step and the next step basically is where the iterator is supposed to start. So, if you remember we said that the iterator will uh, have to repeat the following steps after initialization. We have to pick a card from uh, pile 1, then we have to move this card into a different pile, uh, pile 2 so that uh, you know the same card is not visited again and then we have to increment the value of count. And uh, we keep repeating this step till we find that pile 1 is empty. At this point in time there is no further card to pick, so we stop right. So, uh, we need somehow to describe this iterator. So, we have to start this iterator somewhere. Now, usually the iterator is started usually with the condition right. So, the condition is when do we stop and the stopping condition basically is when the pile 1 is empty. So, we are going to start with this condition right. So, the check the condition that we are checking is, uh, is uh, are there any more cards to look at in pile 1. So, are there more cards in pile 1. So, uh, that is the condition we are checking and uh, clearly if there are no more cards in pile 1 then we stop and if there are more cards in pile 1 then we proceed to the iteration steps which is basically to pick a card from pile 1 right. So, there are two possible outcomes for this uh, condition check. One is that there could be more cards in pile 1 which means the condition comes out true or there could be no more cards in pile 1 which means the condition comes out false. So, these are the two outcomes that are possible at this stage. Uh, so, let us explore the, the no condition which means that there are no more cards which means the condition turns out false in which case we have nothing further to do right. So, we can stop. So, the way to denote stop basically is to put this terminal symbol end over there. So, this basically says that we have ended the program. So, there are no more cards and we can now end the program and uh, at this point uh, one could output the valuable the variable counts value, but we are not discussing out output right now. Uh, but at when we reach end if you look at the value of this variable count then uh, that uh, variable count uh, should basically be carrying the value of the number of cards right. So, the other uh, path that we can take is uh, when there are more cards in pile 1 which means that the condition evaluates to true. So, we are down this path now and when we are when you are down that path then we have to do the first step which is picking a card from pile 1. So, uh, let us call this card that we are going to pick card x because uh, we will be referring to this card later on. So, let us pick a card x from pile 1 and uh, after we have picked card x from pile 1 we have to mark it as having been visited or having been seen. So, that we do not visit it again and the way we are doing that is by moving this card x to pile 2 ok. So, we moved it from pile 1 to pile 2 and the next step basically is to increment the value of count because we have now seen one more card. So, we increment the value of count and after we have incremented count now the next question that we ask is what should we do now after we increment the value of count right. So, uh, remember that uh, we are inside an iteration process. So, we have to repeat some set of steps again and again the steps that we have to repeat are picking a card, moving the card and incrementing. So, these three steps have to be repeated. So, we have to go back to a place where all these three steps can be repeated. But remember that also we have to be able to stop uh, this iteration and the stopping of the iteration happens when there are no more cards. So, the appropriate point to go back to really is to this condition again right. So, after you incremented count we go back to the beginning of the iteration where again we check whether there are any more cards in pile 1 and if there are more cards in pile 1 then we repeat the iteration steps again that is these three steps again. On the other hand if there are no more cards then we can stop ok. So, here now we have all the steps that we need to do counting. We have this uh, initialization part which is basically setting count equal to 0 and putting all the cards in pile 1 which we have not described in a box, but we assume that at the beginning that is already done. And then we have this condition check followed by these three steps which we keep repeating till there are no more cards at which point we can end ok. So, we have described in some sense now the flow chart for counting cards we saw uh, how to build a flow chart for, uh, for counting the number of cards and after that we saw uh, that we could modify that procedure for counting cards to do the sum of the match marks. So, now uh, the question we are asking is can we convert this procedure which is a sequence of steps for summing or adding up all the match marks can we turn that into a flow chart right this is the question we are asking. So, um, 
So, just to revisit the flow chart for counting cards, we said that the flow chart for counting cards starts with the terminal symbol start, uh, then we initialize uh, the value of count to 0, then we check whether there are any more cards in pile 1 uh, or not. If there are no more cards, we can stop and at this point the value of count uh, reflects the number of cards. On the other hand, if there are more cards in pile 1, which in, which in which case the condition turns out to be true, then we repeat these 3 steps, which is we pick a card x from pile 1, we move it to pile 2 and we increment count. Okay. So, now the question we are asking is, how do we modify this, uh, this flow chart to not just count the cards, but to add up all the maths marks from the cards, right. How do we add up all the maths marks from the cards? So, the summing up the maths marks also needs to start. So, I guess the start is the same, but there should be some change over here, because we do not have count as a variable, but we have a new variable which is called sum. So, we have to change this and similarly, instead of incrementing count, we have to do something else over here. So, there has to be some change over here, but it looks like all the other steps are uh, exactly the same. So, let us leave them in for, for, for now and see whether we can change these two steps and see where that leads us. Okay. So, uh, to so basically, we, we need to make some change to this flow chart and uh, it looks like uh, the changes we have to make are to these two boxes, the other, other boxes seem to be roughly the same. So, there is no count variable, we have a sum variable. So, we have to make some change to this, this box and uh, instead of incrementing count, we ne need to make some change uh, to this box as well. So, let us see what changes we got to make to these two boxes. So, uh, after we start, we are instead of initial, initializing count to 0, we want to initialize sum to 0. So, the way to write that in the flow chart is by replacing to put inside this uh, process box the thing sum equal to 0, right. So, that basically initializes sum to 0. And in this box, instead of incrementing count, we are adding the maths marks of the card that we have seen to sum, right. So, the way to do that basically is to write something inside this box which says add card excess math score to sum. Okay. So, some way of uh, doing that, some activity which will basically add to sum the value of card excess math, uh, card excess math score. Okay. So, um, the rest of the flow chart if you can look is the same. So, let us just revisit this flow chart and you can see basically the rest is the same. We start, we set sum equal to 0, we see whether there are any more cards in pile 1. If there are not, then we stop and at this point in time the variable sum will carry the total total of all the match marks in the all the cards we have seen. On the other hand, if there are more cards to be seen, then we pick a card x from the pile 1, move it to pile 2, so that we do not see this card again. And then we add from that card x, we look at the math score and add that math score to sum. And after we have done that, we go back to this stage, right? This, this stage, because this is the point at which we are again going to check whether there are more cards in pile 1 or not. If there are no, then we will stop. Otherwise, we will repeat these 3 steps again. right? So, this is the iteration process. So, you can see again here that the sum of maths marks also has <coughs> an initializing step in which we are initializing the variable sum to 0 and it has an iterative process. right? The iterative process has 3 steps inside it and this is basically to pick a card to move it into another pile and to add the math score. And the third one add to math score is what we called an accumulate, right? An accumulate because the sum is accumulating the value of all the math scores. So, we are seeing a picking a card, moving the card and accumulating. These are the 3 steps that we are seeing and that is being iterated many times, right? So, from the 2, uh, two flow charts that we have seen so far, one for count and another for sum, it looks like both these flow charts are very similar in nature, right? So, uh, one could ask the question whether there is a general flow chart for iteration, right. So, iteration itself, is there a general flow chart? It looks like there is, right. So, you start the, start the process of iteration, you initialize the iteration and inside the things over which the structure over which you want to iterate, in this case it is the set of cards, you see whether there are any unvisited elements or not, right. Uh, any car, so in our case basically the way to look at whether there are unvisited elements is to look at whether any cards in pile 1. If there are unvisited elements, then you basically pick an unvisited element, 
mark it as visited and our way of marking it as visited was to move it into another pile which is pile 2 and then you do update update some variables right which are representing some status of what is going on. So, in the case of count this was basically incrementing count in the case of sum this was accumulating the value in sum and then you go back to this decision check of unvisited elements and you keep doing this iteration till such a point in time where there are no further unvisited elements right. So, at this point you can stop. So, this is a generic flowchart for any iterator and hopefully we should be able to use this flowchart uh, repeatedly when we see more requirements for iteration.